Hello, this video will go through some of the first few steps for the Chapter 10 Tech in Action Greater Project. One thing uh, let's remind ourselves is when it asks us to save and as the uh, last and the first name, the main purpose behind this is so you have one master left and then you're working on a new one with a new name. That way, if you make a mistake and you cannot recover it, you could always go back to the master and also you won't be burning attempts uh, as you go back to my IT lab and try to reopen it again. So after you save it, then uh, let's make sure that the developer tab is showing on top of here. Okay, if the developer top is not here, go to file. And then go to options. When options show, go into the customized ribbon. And then look on the right side. And uh, the developer tab here is unchecked. Check it, say OK. Then the developer tab will show up on the main menu. Okay, so now let's get started with step two. It says on the time card, it, in cell B3, it says to type Ted Hoyt. But as you can see here, B3 is already tied up. That's because this is not the time card, it's the payment log. So go into the time card, then in B3, type in Ted Hoyt. Then it says on B4, use the B lookup. So I'm going to say equals. I'm just going to type a B. And then all these numbers or all these uh, uh, functions show up. So it, if you want to get the V lookup, type one more letter and the V lookup shows up. So at this point, the tab, then the rest of the setup will show up. Okay, so the first thing we want to get here is whatever the value that we're trying to evaluate. That'll be up here. So go ahead and click on B3. Then it's a comma. Then it says to uh, bring in the range A2 through C16 for the table for the second argument, which is the table array. OK, so once you got it up here, go ahead and clip up here and then go look for the table array, which is in the uh, employee data. So now I'm going to click A2 through A16. Now I could uh, change the name here, and uh, it looks like it's already been changed to average. So I could hit Enter. And it says we got too few functions, but that's fine because we're not finished yet. So at this point, come up to the uh, formula here and then put in a comma. And then we have to tell it which role that we want to get this information from. And what does it tell us? It says return the value from the third column. So it's, it's uh, column one, two, and three. So we'll just type in a three. Now what we're doing different from before is it also says to, for the fourth argument, put in the false, at false as the uh, range lookup argument. If you don't do this, this one will not work. So type in false. and close it and hit enter. Okay, so the employee number, it says is THS135 for Ted Hoyt. Let's look up in the employee data. Uh, and, and for Ted Hoyt, it is 135. Okay, then on the time card it, uh, on the worksheet, it says to click cell C9. So on the time card, go to C9 and type in uh, 411, uh, 2016. So it's uh, 11, 2016. Enter. And I believe it wants you to copy it down. So that would work. Just as a reminder for step three, we will go into the uh, department. Just as a reminder for step three, 
you would go into cell B5 and create a uh, similar VLOOKUP function. But instead of getting the information out of column three, you'll get it out of column two. So the third argument would be what? It would be two instead of three. For step five, the first thing you do is to select the range D9 through D13. Then on the data tab, which is going to the top and looking for data right here. And then you, you want to then look for the uh, data validation uh, dialog. So look for the data validation. The data validation is in the data tools. So click on data validation. And then it'll give you a few more things that it, it wants you to do. So it says on the settings tab, click the arrow, uh, allow arrow. So on the settings tab, we'll click the allow arrow. And then it wants you to select decimal. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is click on the da data arrow and select between zero and the, uh, select between, and then enter zero in the minimum box and 12 on the maximum box. For the error, uh, add a stop error alert. That's a stop error alert. And for the title, that's it wants us to do, put in um, invalid entry. And for the actual error message, put in total hours work cannot exceed 12 hours. So now in cell D9, they ask you to put in 16 to make sure this invalid entry does work. So I'm going to put in 16 and D9. Hit enter. And then you get your invalid entry. So let's cancel out of this. OK, so now it's going to tell you to uh, retry and put in 10. So I'm going to put in 10. That's OK. And then it'll tell you what to put into the rest, which is 8, 12, 8, and 9. So 8, 12, 8, and 9. OK. okay now we'll have a if statement to do. It says to say an if, click on cell F9, we're going to put in an if statement to test to see if the value in D9 is less than or equal to eight. If this condition is true, then multiply D9 times E4, the regular rate. And uh, if the condition is false, then multiply eight times E4 because since we don't have anything over eight, then to add to that E9 times e, uh, E5, the overtime rate. Use the fill handle to copy the formula to F10 through F13. Make sure you use absolute cell references and in parentheses in the formula where needed. So that would indicate what the regular rate is like here and what the overtime rate is like right here. So let's start with the first one. Okay, for the overtime formula. So it is an if statement, so we'll go equals if. Now the condition we're looking at is the total hours work. So if that is less than or equal to eight hours, then comma, then we just pay him the regular rate, which would be the total hours work. That's D9, click it, times the regular rate, comma. Okay, so if that's false, we're going to have to go to overtime. So if we, he or she worked uh, overtime, we know he has at least eight hours of regular work times 
the regular rate. And to that, we're going to add the overtime rate, which is the overtime hours times the overtime. Then we'll close it and we'll say enter. So that seems to be okay. Now let's look at the formula one more time here on top. So now we're multiplying one part of the equation that will change relatively if we copy it down, but another one that is uh, uh, static. So we want to make sure these numbers don't change. So that would be like E4 and E5. So let's go back up to the formula, click in front of the E4 and hit F4, or just put the dollar sign in front of the E and the four, and also behind E5. I'm gonna need F4 again. And now, the first time I tried this, I started to copy the formula, but remember, we have another E4 again because we're using the regular rate twice. So be sure to put the dollar signs in front of that one too by hitting uh, F4. Now remember, uh, if you're doing this on a laptop, you may have to uh, hold the function key down to do it for the, the uh, dollar sign to work. Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter here now. So let's see if this works out. So I'm gonna copy this down. Okay, so for the non-overtime rates, it seems to be status, static, and, but for the overtime rate, it does seem to increase. So this seems to be working out. Okay, so we added the, the developer. I would like for you to try the, uh, the rest of this on your own. And if your macro does not work, okay, it's sometimes easier just to delete it and redo it again. Thank you.